America's most iconic delivery system, Grumman LLV. I have no clue what this video is going to be about, but the fat electrician makes amazing videos, so I'm excited to jump into this. I'd appreciate if you guys can hit that subscribe button down below. I am also posting extra content to my Patreon page. If you guys want to have a look at that, the link is in the description. But yeah, let's jump into this and see what we got. Every single time I try to make a funny, lighthearted video, it gets completely unhinged. Okay. Uh, Today we're talking about Northrop Grumman's most iconic vehicle of all time. It's a vehicle? Every aviation nerd just sat forward in their chair because if I don't pick their favorite Northrop Grumman plane, they're going to roast me in the comments uh, section. Plane. Because if you don't know, Northrop Grumman is a defense contractor primarily known for making warplanes, and they've created some of the most iconic and effective warplanes the world has ever seen. So Interesting. But the title's most iconic delivery system. Warplane. Some of those planes include the F-4F Wildcat, the F-6F Hellcat, America's Gun with Wings, the A-10 Warthog, oh, the, the B-21 Stealth Bomber, oh, wow. and its replacement, the B-21 Raider. Oh, wow. But all of these pale in comparison to Northrop Grumman's most iconic and durable vehicle of all time, a vehicle that was designed to perform its task swiftly despite snow or rain or heat or gloom of night, the LLV, the Long Life Vehicle, oh. a.k.a the mail truck wait wait wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait 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 so it is a delivery truck so you got all these badass planes and we're talking about the <laughs> a delivery truck they made or heat or gloom of night the llv the long life vehicle aka the mail truck okay okay you're not serious <laughs> yes he is Okay. You've what got could to be shitting me? How do we have a story about a mail truck? I shot down three megs on one of those. Yeah, the same people that made like half the planes in U.S. military history also made your friendly neighborhood mail truck. What? I can only imagine that the U.S. Postal Service put out a memo like, hey, we're looking for a vehicle to help deliver packages. And the U.S. government was like, oh, package, payload, potato, potato, same thing. Call up Northrop Grumman. They're really good at delivering that type of stuff. <laughs> okay, Northrop Grumman's used to putting warheads on foreheads. Now they're putting parcels on porches. It's the same Yo, thing. Now all I need is for... Imagine being the people at, um, was it Norfolk Grumman? Grum would you Say Grumman. Imagine being the people at Grumman, right? That your next job is to make a mail truck instead of a badass plane, bro. Yo. Lockheed Martin to start making action figures and my life will be complete. You put munitions, chips, and toys? <laughs> Yo, Toy Soldier was so good. Okay, all jokes aside, I'm actually legitimately upset that this thing is named the LLV. I mean, it's made by Northrop Grumman, the makers of the F4F Wildcat and the F6F Hellcat, and you didn't name this the Mail Cat? Are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? Did you forget to do the ad? No, I did the ad. Thanks for finally being in the YouTube video. Oh, look at the dog. Friends. You're welcome. Nice dog, rat. <laughs> So after finding out that the mail truck that I've grown up with my entire life was actually made by Northrop Grumman, I decided, hey, I'm going to make a video on this. This is going to be hilarious. It's going to be lighthearted. It's going to be funny. Right. It's going to be great. So I started looking up the specs. I started looking up the history. Wait, 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 wait. Don't tell me it gets freaky. Don't tell me there's like a jet engine in the mail truck, bro. <laughs> How this came to be. And then I asked myself one simple question. Wait a minute. Why on earth is a defense contractor making this little tiny car when yeah. an automotive contractor probably could have done the same thing better and probably cheaper? And per usual, to absolutely nobody's surprise, it's because once again, the government ruins everything. Yes, we do. <laughs> All right, so let's take it from the top. Once upon a time in 1775, the United States Continental Congress says, hey, delivering mail is super duper important because right. we don't have email and phones and telegraphs yet. And delivering letters is the only way that we can communicate. Yeah, so we need said to that. establish a post office and we're going to take one of our smartest founding fathers benjamin franklin and make him the first postmaster general to figure this entire thing out then oh, yeah? the government pretty much immediately decides hey we want this to kind of be a government agency but also we don't want to have to give it any tax money to be able to run itself so what we're going to do is we're going to make it a legal monopoly we're going to go ahead and say that the u.s postal service is the only entity that is legally allowed to deliver the mail that way the u.s postal service Yo. is going to be guaranteed to get 100 of the business so they're going to have enough money to be able to fund themselves and not have to rely on taxpayer money 
And this okay. is still going on to this day. This is a legally recognized and regulated monopoly. Buh! What about oh, wow. and UPS? Buh! That's actually a good question out of you for once. So the monopoly only applies to like letters and mail and shit like that. Packages are technically different and there's allowed to be commercial competition there. That's why UPS and FedEx primarily only deliver packages. Now I Yo. say usually because there is an exception that if you have something of vital importance that needs to be like overnighted to somewhere immediately, you are allowed to use FedEx or USPS to ship that if it's of vital importance. And I know what you're thinking. Right. It seems like there's a pretty big gray area there. I mean, who sets the criteria as to whether or not something is important enough? Yeah, yo, my grandma needs to know how my day's been. That's important, you know what I'm saying? To violate the US Postal Service's legal monopoly and be able to use FedEx or UPS to send a letter or an important document. Well, obviously that would be the US Postal Service's in-house federal law enforcement agency, the Postal Inspectors. Oh. I, I'm not shitting you. The mailmen have their own federal law enforcement agency. I had I had no Wait, idea. do they go in like random posts and check it's important? Like what? Idea. Huh? Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, imagine getting this now, on your Christmas post. Inspectors are doing really great things, like making sure that now, typically, the postal inspectors are doing really great things, like making sure that people aren't sending bombs or drugs through the mail or investigating right. people that have had their mail stolen, which, if you didn't know, is actually a federal crime. And back in the day in 1775, when the post office and the postal inspectors were founded, Congress levied the death penalty for stealing mail. And while that's all fine and dandy... What? Bro, if you told me before this video that I'm going to do so many shocked faces about a mail truck video i'd be like oh hell no what is going on once in a while the postal inspectors get a wild hair in their ass and they decide that they are going to enforce their legalized monopoly for example back in 1993 a big company called equifax was using a private courier to deliver all of their mail not just their packages and uh -huh. because of this the u.s postal inspectors launched an armed raid of their company headquarters determined that their mail wasn't important enough to be overnighted and that they were legally required to use the united states postal service Service and then gave them a $30,000 fine. Yeah, if you live in America and you run a business and you decide what? that you don't like using the United States Postal Service and you're going to exclusively try to use like FedEx or UPS or something, there is a greater than 0% chance that armed mailmen in body armor will show up to your headquarters and raid what? your business, tell you that's illegal, and then give you a fine. Okay, do I want to talk shit right now? Yo, I ain't gonna lie. I feel like I want to do that to experience that, bro. Like, that would be scary, but, like, what a story to tell people. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo. Now, because that seems absolutely insane and ridiculous, yeah, a little bit. Am I gonna? Absolutely not, because they know where I live, okay? <laughs> I didn't know they existed until yesterday, and already Special Forces Mailman is on the top of my list of people I'm not gonna fuck with. So everybody kind of already knows that being a mail carrier is a government job, but most people People don't understand to the extent that the US Postal Service is its own government entity so much so right. that it necessitates its own federal law enforcement agency so going back to the Grumman mail cab the actual physical transportation of the mail it always just kind of went with the times back in the 1700s when they were founded it was delivered on horseback when cars came out and they became more and more common the post office began using more and more cars so wow. the US Postal Service would just acquire whatever cars they needed whenever they needed them and this went on for decades but by the 1930s and 1940s 40s it was becoming a huge issue because the usps had acquired a ton of different cars they were all different makes all different models they all drove different they all had different carrying capabilities they all required different mechanics different parts it was a huge logistical nightmare for this enormous fleet of vehicles right. as i'm sure you could imagine it would be like a hundred times easier if all of the vehicles in the same. u.s postal fleet were the same exact thing and all had the same capability requiring the same replacement parts Makes sense. the same type of mechanics of course could teach all the postal carriers how to drive one vehicle and one vehicle only. So right. at the end of World War II, with hundreds of thousands of Americans returning home and looking for jobs, the United States Postal Service recognized a very unique opportunity with the Willys Motor Company Jeep. Because the Jeep was being used by the U.S. military, there was already a Wait, yo, is that, how, is that how the U.S. mail was getting around? A ton being manufactured, and a lot of the people returned... 
Yo, if you if you wonder why you've lost your mail, this is why right here. There was already a ton being manufactured, and a lot of the people returning home from the military already knew how to drive it. There was a ton uh. of people qualified to work on them mechanically, and there was a ton of excess parts around. And with the military downsizing, there was a huge surplus of them, so it was a perfect fit in pretty much every way. It is a rare case of the government doing something 100% right, and the United good. States Postal Service adopted the Jeep as their primary vehicle. And that worked for like 40 years, but as the U.S. got bigger and bigger with more and more people and people started sending more and more mail and more and more packages, the capacity right. that the Jeep could hold simply wasn't enough and the United States Postal Service wanted something that was capable of carrying more mail. But you have to remember, this is a... Bro, <laughs> I feel... Why do I feel like this is going to get crazy? Why do I actually feel like this is going to get mad? And I can't like, is this real? Because this was badass, bro government agency and they can't do anything simple when it comes to getting new equipment so they can't just go over to like ford or chevy and be like hey build me a new mail truck no they have to figure okay. out the exact specifications that they're looking for and then they have to send it out to all the government contractors so that they can all put a bid in on it that way the government huh? contractors can come in do the exact bare minimum and make a ton of money i mean let's just look at the llv for example they wanted this thing to weigh a maximum of three thousand pounds guess how much it weighs exactly three thousand pounds they wanted it to be able to carry a minimum of a thousand pounds guess how much it can carry thousand exactly a thousand pounds on the dot they wanted it to be this tall this wide this long and grubbin came along and said dope i'm gonna make a metal fucking rectangle exactly that size <laughs> throw an engine and some wheels on it and call it a good day they literally made a mobile <laughs> filing cabinet which to be fair in hindsight after serving in the military i should have been able to recognize that the mail truck that i grew up with was absolutely a military grade piece of equipment right. built by the cheapest bidder i mean this is what i drove in the military the humvee ambulance and i mean this yo it's so similar yeah well it is box shape. <laughs> similarities are there i mean they both look like the blueprints for them were drawn by a third grader that didn't know how to draw a car yet and then the 3d renderings were made out of fucking legos now to be fair though while i have driven the humvee ambulance and it's a miserable experience i've never driven a mail truck so i don't actually know what that's like okay. so i turned to the internet because surely some mailman has written something somewhere on surely. the planet that is going to tell me what that experience is like and here's what i found quote regular driving around town was pretty bearable but driving the llv on the highway shouldn't even be legal huh? i've had to do it a few times and those times were probably the most terrified i've been while operating any motor vehicle what? Why? riding a motorcycle over 100 miles an hour no problem merging onto the highway in a mail truck you couldn't pay me to do it again the sluggish acceleration oh. deafening noise, and harsh vibration were all bad enough but knowing the body of the vehicle would crush like a soda can in an accident is what made it such a frightening experience. Nope, I was right, because that is too oh, a wow. what it's like to drive a military ambulance. I got one of those things going 75 one time thanks to an enormous hill, and it felt like I was re-entering the Earth's atmosphere as everything that wasn't strapped <laughs> down rattled out of place and started falling to the floorboard. Now, I don't know this for certain, but driving a Humvee or an LLV really fast kind of seems like anal beads, you know? The faster you go, the bumpier it gets, and if you go too fast, there's gonna be shit everywhere what, if you just... what bro bro is that like his personal experience okay. brian this does not seem appropriate to watch in front of the baby <laughs> now to be fair to the grumman mail cat is it a turd absolutely but it is really really tough because here's right. some of the testing criteria the llv had to be able to meet before it would be adopted as the usps postal vehicle uh we have drive 5760 miles at 55 miles an hour with zero malfunctions and zero broken okay parts. Fair enough. drive 11520 miles at 45 miles an hour on gravel with zero malfunctions and zero broken parts. okay drive 2880 miles stopping every 250 feet accelerating to at least 15 miles an hour hour in between stops with zero malfunctions and zero broken parts right so pretty much there they're simulating all the driving possibilities really parts drive 960 miles on cobblestone zero broken parts right. drive 960 miles over potholes ensuring that every single wheel hits the pothole at least 35,000 times with zero broken parts. To accomplish what? that, they took a Chevy S10 chassis, shortened the wheelbase so it could have a tighter turn radius, and then made the entire body of the vehicle out of aluminum so it couldn't rust. So at a minimum, 
at least it's tough. Despite the yeah. fact that it is really tough, it is finally time to start replacing the United States Postal Service carrier vehicle because, well, the engine that they put in these things is an engine from the 1970s known as the Iron Duke, and this bad boy's getting like nine miles to the gallon. This is the same engine they were putting is in that the Cavalier good? in the trailer park Ferrari back in the day. I mean, the Pontiac Fiero. Don't laugh, the Pontiac Fiero is high class white trash, okay? The only thing cooler than that when I was growing up was the 2002 Dale Earnhardt edition Monte Carlo. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. I, I'm not really a car guy, I'm not gonna lie. I don't, I don't know any of these cars names. The main problem with the LLV is the gas mileage, okay? Because it only gets nine miles to the gallon, you have to realize this is like the biggest fleet of vehicles that the United States has. There's over 140,000 of these things, meaning that for every single penny that gas prices go up, the US Postal Service has to spend an additional $8 million on fuel alone. And this is a like, oh, America's capitalist. That's fine. That's the cost of doing business. Just raise the prices of your services and it's covered. It's no big deal. You would think that, but remember the US Postal Service is a government regulated monopoly, meaning that anytime they want to change their pricing, the government has to sign off on it okay. and the government takes forever to do anything. Another example of this would be like the power company, right? Because you can't shop around for different power power providers the same way you look for like an internet service provider or a cell phone right. provider. You only have one power company available where you live the same way you only have one post office available where you live. Any I, I think in the UK, wait, in the UK do we have multiple different power com I'm pretty sure we do. I'm pretty sure we do, like, we have different options. I don't know. It might be different in the UK than in America. Anytime the power company wants to raise their rates, the government has to sign off on it, and it's a huge deal. Same thing applies to the postal service and stamps or anything else. Because of this, right. they can't effectively adapt and change their prices, so it's a humongous issue. So how do we solve this? Well, there's two options. You could A, get rid of the monopoly that's set in place because it's no longer effective for what it was originally supposed to do by helping the USPS, and now it's actually hindering <coughs> them more than it's helping because they're not no longer able to change their prices to actually be competitive or you could be make them get different vehicles and obviously we're absolutely 100% of the time going to go with B because the US government or any government ever really is never ever going to give up control and they have control over the USPS and oh, yeah. they're never ever going to let that go they would rather see that thing burn to the ground <laughs> than give up control over it so That's obviously the true. USPS is getting new vehicles but then that bites the US Postal Service in the ass because remember they're a government agency and they can't just like go to Toyota and be like hey Toyota that new truck that you guys just came out with that's ten thousand dollars and really cool can we buy a bunch of those for fleet vehicles no they can't do that they have to figure out the specs they want then they have to send that out and let all the bro that's so lo they, they should just be able to do it just like come to an agreement These defense contractors bid on them and then after they bid they have to give the defense contractors millions of dollars so that they can develop the new vehicle Mod. so they're gonna pay for all the r&d up front and then when oshkosh defense <laughs> wins the bid with this fucking thing that looks like it was animated by pixar <laughs> the other company that they beat is going to turn around and file a lawsuit and sue because they're saying that it wasn't a fair enough competition despite the what? fact that the u.s taxpayers literally gave them all the money for r d in the first place and this then that's going to delay the whole project more and then bottom line it's going to take 20 fucking years to fix the issue the entire time the u.s postal service is struggling and trying to figure shit out while they it's actually crazy they do it that way but yeah government man government government refuses to let them actually do their job and be fucking competitive and it just sucks because the u.s postal service is sacred there's nothing more sacred to society than the mailman all is that I wanted, true all i wanted to do was have a happy light-hearted video because i thought it was funny that northrop grumman was making mail trucks and now after researching it i'm gonna get upset every time <laughs> i watch my mail lady deliver the mail because i'm gonna recognize that she's wearing a parka and overalls inside of her vehicle because the heater barely works because she's driving a 40 year old mail truck that's a piece wow. of shit because the government fucks up everything they even get near touching so how we got to this from a mail truck video bro in conclusion i guess that's the story of why mail trucks are made by defense contractors and if Mad. you're a mail carrier i've always appreciated you but i'm gonna be honest i have another level of appreciation for what you do because i truly genuinely had no idea the levels of bureaucratic bullshit that you had to hurdle <laughs> on your way to get mail into my mailbox so thank you yo if anybody is ever worked for us usps right 
If anybody's ever worked for them or you do work for them, you gotta let me know down below your experiences, man. Seriously, thank you. Best way to support the channel is go buy some But that was really good. 10 out of 10 video. You know, the more history I read, the less I trust the government. And maybe, just maybe, that's why in the American education system, uh -oh. they emphasize math and science and English way more than they emphasize history. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. Uh oh, uh -oh. Tip point hot. But no, great video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on Twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.